want to thank the Motorcycle Mechanics Institute for sponsoring this video. MMI is a school for motorcycle enthusiasts who want to train for a career in the industry. Click the link above for more information. Hello, welcome to Chuckwalla Valley Raceway in the middle of nowhere, California. Uh, it might seem like a sunny, bright day, but I'm wearing this scarf because it's frigid cold, which is funny and ironic considering what we're riding today. Over here is Tyler O'Hara's championship winning bagger. Largely identical to the one uh, McWilliams rides, Jimmy McWilliams, one he rides. Uh, you can see it's the standard nose piece, front fairing with the headlight stickers, obviously. Rolling suspension, front and back, Brembo brakes, Dimag wheels, I believe. So down here, pardon my shadow, but down here in this area, you can see where they had to clear the frame itself to give them some ground clearance because that's how far they were leaning these things over, which boggles my mind. Um, SNS engine covers, again, for protection on the engine. Look at that cool rear set and the, look how much that rear brake is dangled over like that. And just that billet machining on the uh, bracketry itself, it's pretty cool. And then let's look down here. Here's a really cool bit. That is the standard Challenger swing arm, at least the top half of it. And then the bottom triangular half, they, Indian team and SNS added all that bracing to handle just the, the forces that they put this thing through in a road race situation. The cornering forces, the, the power that goes through it. They really had to add some stiffness to get some, some, well, the feedback they want from the frame for the riders. And that's just a massive thing they had to do. But the frame itself, this area and then everything else above it. That's all stock Indian Challenger. The rules state that they can't change that stuff. They can change the steering geometry, which they did. Different triple clamps, uh, different swing arm angle. This thing is raised up pretty high and the front is uh, raked in a lot compared to the standard Challenger bagger, just to give it proper steering dynamics. The engine itself, um, Big board kit, I believe, cams, pistons, like this thing is properly, properly worked over to get it into a race trim. Carbon fiber bags. As we look over here at the fuel tank, this is the standard Challenger fuel tank. They cut it in half down the middle and squeezed it, the two ends together, moved the fuel sender from the right side to the left side to be able to fit this huge air cleaner that then feeds into the, I believe it's 70 millimeter throttle body. It's massive. As we come up here to the business end of things, look at that giant, massive triple tree. And then the rider controls are kind of standard fare, actually. You've got the buttons to do God knows what. This is apparently a rain light, all sorts of different blue, yellow, no, blue, green, red buttons, which honestly I have no idea what they do. You've got the thumb brake here on Tyler's bike. Jeremy's bike does not have that. The uh, brake lever adjustable uh, dial there. And then the AIM data logger slash instrument panel right there to give the rider just the information they need. Check out this super trick but super simple, lightweight subframe to hold this giant fairing in place. I mean, look at my hand and look how big that piece is. It's massive. The machine work is intricate, it's beautiful. And in 2022 anyway, it gets the job done. You can see the fittings for the brake lines, all the electrical hoses and cables. Gale Speed Master Cylinder. It's a, what, 19 by 19 Master? So that's pretty cool. Yeah, just whoop, trick stuff all over the place as I trip over a power cord.
Man, where do I even start when it comes to wrapping my head around the Indian Challenger bag of hair? This particular bike, this is the one I rode. This was Jeremy McWilliams' 2022 bike. Over there, it's his 2023 bike, but that's besides the point right now. There's no getting around it. This is a big, large motorcycle. Everything you think you know about body position and how to act and move on a bike, it kind of has to take a back seat for a second. I had to like relearn how to how to ride a bike. It's it's big and it's wide and it defies everything you think you know about riding a motorcycle quickly. But once I could wrap my head around it, it was wild. I think the biggest thing I noticed was this changes direction better than any bike this big has any right to. It'll flick from left to right, right to left, super easy and super quickly. And this is a 500 plus pound bike that's as big as a school bus. These wings here actually put a good spot for your legs to be in when you're mid corner. Um, there was no way I'm getting a knee down on this thing. It was just too big. I know the, the pro guys do and that's because they're badasses. Today was a weird day. It's cold and it's windy and it's uh, not conducive to me trying to be a hero. As far as the power goes, if you remember about a year ago, I rode the Harley uh, bagger, the championship winning Harley bagger. I think this Indian has better top end power and the Harley has better grunt coming out of the corner, more low end torque. The transmission on the Indian is killer. It's got a quick shifter, just bang, bang, bang through the gears. Downshifting is still the old fashioned way with the clutch, but it could do it pretty easily. With the Harley, I had to be more careful being sure I was shifting up or down. Carrying corner speed, and then especially driving out. At first, I felt what felt like tire slippage, maybe a cold tire scenario, something like that. That really wasn't the case. They're not allowed to modify the frames and put any um, bracing on it. It was really the chassis flexing. And since it's a, you know, the frame is bolted together, whereas the Harley is a solid frame from front to back, these connection points make the chassis a bit flexy flyer to put it kind of mildly. The first time I experienced it, it scared the crap out of me. I thought I was, you know, don't want to crash this one-off motorcycle. But that's just the characteristic of the chassis as it flex and it's moving around like that. So it's something to get used to. The brakes, huge Brembo brakes for a bike this big. It stops really, really well. And yeah, you know, beyond the whatever five or so laps I did on this thing, it's really hard to get super in depth and detail about what it can do, but Man, I bet racing this thing against 12, 15, 20 other guys on similar bikes is absolutely hairball because this is so wild. It's such a different experience than anything. Well, obviously the closest I can relate it to is the Harley I rode. And that blew my mind too. These are just a whole different beast and a whole different animal to try and ride. I said this about the Harley and I'm gonna say it again about the Indian. You really have to experience this to truly, truly appreciate the engineering and the thought behind it all. If you're a critic of like bagger racing, I get it, I was too. When I seen the racing, when I've, now that I've ridden the bikes, I'm like, these are super bikes just in different clothes. The amount of thought and engineering that goes into these bikes is the same level as, or maybe more than what you would find in a, you know, your typical sport bike and it's, Super cool to see what can happen when engineers are allowed to engineer and actually build cool stuff. This bike should not work as well as it does. So I'm gonna go back to my computer now, really process my thoughts and uh, try and clarify them some more. If you want my, my full, maybe thought out impressions of the Indian Challenger bagger that won the King of the Bagger Championship in 2022, go over to Motorcycle.com, check out my review there. to thank the Motorcycle Mechanics Institute for sponsoring this video. MMI is a school for motorcycle enthusiasts who want to train for a career in the industry. Click the link above for more information.